There's a book publisher called Brave Books, okay? And they produce books that are titled things like Little Lives Matter, Hands Off My Coconut Cannon, or something like that. It's right-wing conservative Christian evangelical extremist propaganda for children. That's what it is. I've been going through a series where I'm reading a bunch of these books for children. The company was originally created by Kirk Cameron, Brave Books or Brave Publishing or whatever. I wanted to read one today, but before we read it, let me give a little introduction to explain why they're doing this and what it's all about. Check this clip out. This is Gene Bailey on the left. This is a TV show called Flashpoint, owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland. Gene Bailey is the host. And this was said on the Valentine's Day episode 2023. Listen to this. You know, when we look back on Hitler, Hitler went for the youth. The enemy always goes for the youth. We must take up arms and go for our youth, arms of the truth and of, of godly principles. But that's why Brave Books has been producing books the way they have at, at an astonishing rate. And Donald Trump even shouted them out recently. So let's read some of these books that they made for children, some of these propagandistic, ridiculous books. See what they have to say. Now, I wanted to read one of these books. Before I started my last segment, I did a poll to see which book it was that we were going to read. So let's see what the results are. Looks like Elephants Are Not Birds took the top with 242 points. Wow. Next is Fame, Blame, and the Raft of Shame. That one's a cancel culture one. We might end up reading that one next, but looks like we're doing the anti-trans Elephants Are Not Birds book. Let's take a look at it, see what this has to say for itself. Elephants Are Not Birds by Brave Books. Now, I wonder who wrote this. Saga 1, The Origins, book 1, Elephants Are Not Birds. Copyright Brave Books by Ashley St. Clair. Let's look this person up out of curiosity. I don't think I've ever heard of Ashley St. Clair. She has 125,000 subbies on Instagram or on the gram, as some people call it. Oh, check it out. She's apparently friends with Joe Rogan and stuff. So she's pretty high up there, apparently. She's like a right-wing influencer, it appears. Oh, she lives in New York City also. Interesting. Author, token Jew. Wow. Babylon B Board of Advisors. So yeah, that's who wrote this book. That doesn't surprise me at all. Okay, let's read it. There's a town they call Tokatoke. It's a town that's home to all sorts of folk. At the top of the hill is the big white pine. It's buzzing and hopping all of the time. To most of the animals, Tokatoke felt like heaven. What a stupid name for a town. But not to one elephant whose name was Kevin. I feel like Tokatoke is going to rhyme with something later, isn't it? Most elephants loved it when the clock hit noon, but to Kevin, noon came far too soon. Oh, look, it's Culture the Vulture in the background. If you haven't read any of these books with me yet, uh, this is Culture the Vulture. He's a, an evil bird who tells people what to think and believe and do. Always encourages the bad. That's when elephants pull carts up and down, delivering supplies all over town. That's at noon. I don't mind the carrying or the bringing, but personally, I prefer to be singing. A vulture named Culture was seeing and stalking until, with a grin, he started his squawking. This is uh, These rhymes are on point, actually. Some of these other books that they wrote, the rhymes e were either non-existent or piss poor. This rhyming is really good. Whoever wrote this book knows how to write a children's book. That being said, they're a disgusting person anyways for other reasons. My, oh my, what a lovely sound. Why are you carrying these carts around? Your singing is the best I've heard. Surely, oh surely, you must be a bird. You laugh, said Culture. Okay, and now I guess the Kevin is sitting there thinking about having wings. You laugh, said Culture, but what would you rather, sing songs or carry carts of food that's been gathered? Hmm, it is true that I really love to sing. Maybe being a bird is actually my thing. You know, people can do whatever they want with their lives. If this elephant wants to sing, he can sing. It's not about being a bird or whatever. Like, I feel like this is a mix of a number of different, a number of different messages. And the message is stay in your lane, do what you're expected to do, whether you like that job or not. That's just what it is. It's like a caste system. You know, you were created by God to do a specific job. And if that job is work at Burger King for the rest of your life, then that's what you're going to do. That's kind of the message I'm picking up from these people, right? I mean, this is very obviously an anti-trans book, but these tend to have like 
numerous messages come along with them. And it seems like if you do a job, then you do that job. And that's just what it is, right? That's right, Culture Squawked. It's whatever you feel. It's only your feelings that show us what's real. They're portraying this as though this is what like the left believes. That's just nonsense. The left does not believe that reality is formed out by what you feel. That being said, in psychology, there are some things that you have to take people's word for. Affirmative care exists for a reason. Like, think about this. Somebody tells you that they have depression. How do you test that? Hell, someone tells you that they are experiencing extreme pain, bad headaches. How do you test that? There's no way to test for pain. Literally no way. The prescription to solve that problem is based on affirmative care. You have to assume they're telling you the truth about feeling pain. You have to assume they're telling the truth about being depressed or having anxiety or whatever. You can't measure any of these things. So when it comes to psychology, psychologists, scientists have gotten together and determined how to treat chronic pain. And they've even come up with ways to measure certain things without having actual scientific tests. You know, the beauty of a flower is subjective, right? That is determined solely by each individual person and how they feel about the beauty of a flower. You can't measure the beauty of a flower, except you can, by looking at the most popular type of flower that's purchased. Flower shops do this all the time. There is no objective measurement to tell if a flower is beautiful or not. But you can look at what most people think is beautiful subjectively and make determinations based off of that. That's how the psychology community operates. There's no way to measure pain, but you can measure what most people do when they're feeling pain. You can look at the symptoms that people are having or, or the behaviors that they're displaying and determine if this is likely what they're experiencing and it works that way with the trans community too this isn't something that can be measured okay you can't measure somebody's gender uh what, what's the word here gender ideation am i using that word correctly maybe not let me look it up yeah you can't measure somebody's gender ideation you can't measure how much they feel masculine or feminine or whatever so you look at their behaviors, you look at the things that they do in their life, and you compare it to other people who experience this thing, just like you do with people who feel pain, just like flower shops do with how many flowers sell out the best, just like you do with people who feel anxiety. You determine if they're trans by the behaviors they exhibit and the things that they say, and that's how it's always worked in psychology. So there are some objective things that are objectively measurable. Gender, pain, depression, anxiety, various different psychological things are not themselves objectively measurable, but the effects are. This is completely made up. I just, I really want to drill this point home. It's whatever you feel. It's only your feelings that show what is real. No, it's the feelings that we measure. We're measuring feelings. That's how we can tell if somebody is trans or not, by measuring their feelings and other factors involved in this. Now is the time. Let your bird life commence. It's the only thing that seems to make sense. Yeah, that didn't really rhyme very well. Here's what you need, a beak and some wings. Take them. A bird needs these things. Again, that didn't rhyme well either. The rhyming was so good up to now too. With my wings in their place, I begin a new day. With beauty and grace, I sing on my way. So are they saying that they don't believe that trans is even a real thing that being trans is real i feel like this book is implying that like trans people are just like not real at all that they're just making this up is that what's happening with beauty and grace i sing on my way i'm now a fine birdie so where do i start i guess i'll eat seeds that feels right in my heart kevin tried to peck a seed but his beak wouldn't grip maybe seeds aren't a need so that part i'll skip he tried building a nest, but his twigs wouldn't stay. He had failed his new test. Who needs nests anyway? They're saying that you can try to be a woman if you want, but you'll never actually be a woman. Well, that's simply untrue. There are women out there that you would never guess are trans. 
They are so flawlessly women, you would have no idea unless they told you. This is just like the most detestable, disgusting anti-trans book I think I've read. And it's for children. You know, the children may miss this subtext. It's very possible they miss the subtext, but the parents won't miss this subtext. And as you'll see, at the end of these books, the, they always have a little section in there to kind of screw it in even harder and drive the point home and make sure the parents are teaching the kids that it's wrong to be trans. Fucking disgusting, man. Being a bird is tough. I thought it'd be easy. It's rougher than rough. Frankly, not breezy. You know, the fact that it's difficult to transition from man to woman, the fact that you most definitely do not get societal accept, uh, acceptance, trust me, you don't get accepted by society, should be a hint that maybe if somebody is putting them through the is putting themselves through this shit, maybe it's because that's really what it is. I don't care how accepting society is. There are always people out there who want to make your life miserable. Uh, somewhere around 30 percent of the country is Trump supporting nutcases. That means three out of 10 people you see on the street fucking hate you and want you dead. This place is not an accepting country. I don't know if you realize that or not. Check out this video. This is from r slash public freakout on Reddit. It was posted six days ago. I don't know when this happened or who this is or what, but this experience is not as uncommon as you'd think. I would say at least 50% of the trans community experiences something like this at some point. That's just a guess. You don't take my word for it. Look at statistics for it before believing anything I say. But, I mean, that should be the case for everything. Look at data before you believe anything I say. But this is not as uncommon as people think it is. You know I'm a jerk, right? Trans, eccentric, radical feminist. Are you a turf? I'm a turf. Okay. Wow. Would you like me to move somewhere else? I go. No, actually, you should you should tell me about being a turf. You're this. a boy, right? Don't fuck with me, because honestly, I did. I did hard. I'd like to see you try. Well then, don't judge me for being a turf. I get to be who I want to be. You get to be who you want to be, right? If that's what you want. To be who you want to be, then I like just trying to sit there and eat food and out of nowhere coming in and screaming at people like they are the victim. Be who you want to be, then I get to be who I want to be. Which is I'm not a witch. You're not a witch. Drunk. Person is very obviously drunk. But I don't who is it? Lily, I guess, yeah. Lily said which is what? Like, you you want to be who you want to be. What are you? And I guess the drunk person thought that she was saying that she's a witch. Drunk as shit, obviously. That's no excuse. Honestly, this is not that uncommon. It's not as uncommon as you would think, really. You know what? Take your stupid dog, eat your fucking food, and get the fuck out of my life, okay? This is a first. Because otherwise, I have to label you a white racist. I see. For a 70 year old minority woman, you're a racist. You want your rights? I want mine too. Excuse me. Could you grab the manager, please? Uh, I am so terribly sorry. I'll definitely be escalating about trying to get information, but I do apologize about, apologize about that treatment. So, anyway, Lily Tino, I guess, is the, the TikTok name. At Lily, L I L L Y T I N O underscore. Pretty interesting. Like I said, this is the type of treatment that trans people have to deal with on a regular basis. This is not that uncommon. You know, even if the left were completely and totally 100% accepting of the trans community, three out of 10 people you pass on the street are not. And that kind of thing pops up no matter what. Being a bird is tough. I thought it'd be easy. It's rougher than rough, frankly, not breezy. There's one more thing to test if it's true. I'll jump and then fly like most birdies do. Okay, I don't know what the comparison is supposed to be here. Like, what do trans people do that is, like, 
jumping out of a tree. Big Bear, though busy with baking and brewing, was totally baffled. What's Kevin doing? I guess the point that they're trying to make here is that the trans community is feeding into delusion that is completely dis divorced from reality when that's simply not true at all. I don't know why they have to hyper focus on the trans community like this. Why is there this moral trans panic happening right now? It's just fucking disgusting. Kevin was climbing the big white pine, gripping each branch. I know I'll be fine. Step by step, seeking to reach the high. Uh, so, I'm sorry, seeking to reach the high summit because I have wings. I know I won't plummet. The branch breaks. Ah! Kevin slumped down, feeling upset. His head hung low, as low as could get. While Kevin was sulking, he smelled something smoking. The big white pine with fire was choking. Okay, that was a clumsy rhyme. We need a strong animal to lift heavy weight. Someone gray with shout... Uh, I'm sorry. Someone gray with stout legs and a trunk would be great. Then, in the window, Kevin saw his reflection and noticed his size and big gray complexion. You know, one would think, like, it's not fun being trans. You get books written about you like this. You get people harassing you at, what do you call it? Like, I, I don't even know where they were. At Cheesecake Factory. You get people harassing you at Cheesecake Factory like this. It's not fun, okay? It's not enjoyable. You have to imagine that if you're willing to endure this ridiculous, obnoxious, hateful trans panic the way that these people are, are enduring, it's for a reason. It's because something's not right and they need to correct it. It's not because they like it, not, not just for fun. Silly me, the beak stops the use of my trunk. The right choice I see is to get rid of this junk. Kevin took action. His town was in peril. So he sprayed water from a water-filled barrel. Uh, I'm not seeing the parallel in this situation either. Uh, are, are they saying that men have abilities that birds don't, or <laughs> that women don't have, and that transitioning removes those abilities? What's the point they're trying to communicate here? The fire's put out. Hooray, hooray. It was Kevin the Elephant who saved the day. Elephant in all caps, of course. Thank you, though, thank you, the grateful bear said. If it weren't for you, we'd all be dead. Wow, that's dark. Culture asked Kevin, did you fly like I said? Zip it, Culture. I'm not listening to you. I am most free when I trust what is true. I am an elephant. That's plain to see. From this point on, I'll enjoy being me. Oh, suddenly they're okay with people being who they are, huh? Interesting. I was right from the first. Tricky culture was funny. I'm no more a bird than he is a bunny. What? My life is not just about how I feel. I can sing as an elephant. That's what is real. Wow, that's just, that's absolutely unhinged. So in the back of these books, usually there's some lesson that they want you to read about or some games that they play. We're going to read the lessons. I'm not going to read the instructions for the game, though. Introduction to your family. Brave Books has created the Brave Challenge to drive home key lessons and values illustrated in this story. This is pure, unadulterated childhood propaganda, right? I don't know how else to make this clearer. Each activity, a game, and an accompanying discussion questions takes between 10 and 20 minutes. Family... Ooh. Family-focused and collaborative, the Brave Challenge is a quick and fun option for family game night. Okay, here's how you play the game. We're just going to skip through and look at a few of these little sections. During each game, the parent will roll a die for culture. The number rolled will represent the number of points that culture the vulture earned in the game. As you follow the instructions, Team Brave will also earn points. At, e at the end of each game, we'll write the value on the scoreboard under Team Brave. Introducing Ashley St. Clair. That's the writer. Ashley St. Clair is a popular conservative influencer who has spent her career bringing awareness to issues close to her heart, including free speech, no, and gender identity. She helped Brave Books write this story and the Brave Challenge. She will be popping in to give you ideas on how you can explain these concepts to your child. Does she have a YouTube channel, I wonder? Inter ha Hunter Avalon, or Avalon did a video on her, apparently. Uh, she have a Rumble. 
She doesn't even have a Rumble. What is she famous for? Weird. Is, she, is it like a Twitter account or what? Ashley suggests, have fun. Your children should love this, but it will make the whole experience even better for them if you get into it and have fun with them too. Discerning truth from confusion is game number one's lesson. You need a six-sided die and a blindfold. Culture of the Vulture is trying to trick the members of Team Brave. You will guide your blindfolded teammate through a toke toke I'm sorry, through toke toke and ignore culture so that your teammate doesn't wander off and get lost. Roll the die, record culture's score, and put it on the scoreboard. Blindfold one member of the team brave. A parent will set up obstacles through the room. Blindfolded member of the team will start with six points at one end of the room and begin moving to the other side. So they're basically going to tell you to move left or right, I assume, depending on if there's an object or not. And every time you bump into one, you lose a point that's my assumption one child modification if only one child and one parent are playing have the parent give both good and bad advice altering his or her voice to indicate whether she's speaking for culture or a brave team member game on wow okay okay so here's the talk about it section this is like the propaganda that the parent is supposed to give to the kid how did it feel when you couldn't see and didn't know where to go how did it feel knowing there was a voice trying to trick you in our story, Kevin trusted culture. What happened when you trust culture's voice in today's game? This is bad. What are some places you might hear things that aren't true? Brave books would be one option, I would say. Help your children realize that there are certain places where there are potentially harmful voices. For example, school or the playground. How did it feel to know that there was a voice you could trust? How did you focus on the truth instead of listening to the voice that was trying to confuse you? Where can you hear things that you know are true and why? Ashley suggests your children can trust you, the parent, because you love them and know what's best for them. No, that's not necessarily true. Parent does not necessarily know what's best for the kid. Obviously, the parent that reads this book to their kid does not know what's best for them. They can also trust solid science, the facts that we've observed to be consistently true about the world. I'm surprised that she said that. Usually, people on the right avoid talking about science at all because they know it doesn't back them up. What should you do when you hear something you aren't sure is true? Why is choosing true voices to listen to in real life even more important than in this game? Are you a trustworthy voice? Can your siblings and parents trust you? Why? Wow, just insane, dude. Okay, now the next one is a scavenger hunt, apparently. Lesson... Changing something's appearance cannot change its identity. Well, see, that's interesting that they say that. Here's the thing. Your identity is self-ascribed. As a human being, you determine what your identity is. I identify as cool. I identify as fun and interesting. And I identify as somebody who has an interest in psych uh, psychology subjects. Those are all self-ascribed identity factors right? Gender is an identity factor that is self-ascribed, according to the scientists. Remember, she said they can trust solid science. According to solid science, gender identity is self-ascribed. Okay, for this one, you need a six-sided die, paper and crayons, and a timer or stopwatch. Culture has tricked Kevin's friends into thinking that there's, some that there's something that they're not, Look around Tokotok, or your house, for these friends and fight culture's lies with the truth. Hurry, you have two minutes to complete your mission. Let's look at the instructions, just kind of glance through them. Each member of Team Brave has three minutes to make three drawings on separate pages. When Team Brave is finished, they'll go to a bedroom so the parent can hide the drawings around the house. The parent will give Team Brave three clues and start a timer for two minutes. Team Brave earns six points for finding all three drawings under two minutes, four points for finding two drawings, so on and so forth. A parent will hide the main drawing in a freezer, the dog drawing on top of the stove, and the horse drawing on some shoes. Oh, I'm sorry. A parent will hide the man drawing in, in a freezer. Wow, okay, this is getting specific. The clues are, culture has tried to turn the men into cool dudes, the dogs into hot dogs, and the horses into horseshoes. Okay, those are not very specific clues. I wouldn't get that at all if they said that. If your children are struggling to find their drawings, feel free to give them extra hints. 
And here's the talk about it section. Did culture really change the man into a cool dude, the dog into a hot dog, and the horse into a horseshoe? Okay, th I don't really get the point that they're trying to communicate here. Like, this is nonsense. Can we change something to another thing by changing its appearance or location? Why or why not? What about if we changed its features, like putting ketchup on the dog? When it comes to identity, psychology, you can change certain factors because they are in your head. They're self-ascribed. You want your children to recognize that these things have an inherent nature that doesn't change. Some things, that's true, yes. Not everything. When something, when a quality about you is self-ascribed, like cool, you can change it to anything you want. Today, I can be a cool person. Tomorrow, I can be a happy person. The next day, I can be a sad person. I can be anything I want because it's my fucking identity. Physical objects are different. I can present my identity the way that I want because it's me and it's mine and it's my identity. But, you know, they'll do anything they can to propagandize and twist things around and make people feel like they have to be one very specific way. And that way is a Christian conservative nutcase. You know, this, uh, when you think about it, it's kind of like a Muslim turning Christian and saying, I'm no longer a Muslim, I am now a Christian. They'd, they'd be okay with that self-ascribed uh, identity, right? They'd be okay with changing that piece of your identity. They have no problem with people self-identifying differently than what they were before if they're changing to Christian or conservative. The problem is when they're changing their identity to be, you know, a man or a woman or whatever other thing, something that they don't like. Kevin the elephant tried to make himself a bird by strapping wings to his back. How much did that make him a bird? Why can't an elephant fly? Like, what is it about somebody that makes them a woman specifically? What is that thing in their mind? We could quite possibly come to a point where we can change our DNA to be male or female rather than the other one that we were born as, right? We could come to a point where we could change our DNA. At that point, would it be a woman? When would you accept that a trans person is actually a woman and not a man anymore? At what point? In reality, when it all boils down to it, the belief that these people hold is really that there's some aura or some spirit that they were born as. You know, they existed long before they were in their mother's bellies and they, you know, God created them as a male or a female. And that's just what their spirit is. It has nothing to do with science. Even if science came to the point, which we may one day, that we could turn males into females genetically, it wouldn't matter to these people. What matters is that their, their spirit, their aura is what it is. And they're just going to use everything they can against people. Because ultimately this comes down to hate. They hate people. They hate certain groups of people because they, aren't, they don't fit into their perfect little world view. Help your kids realize that our gender is part of the way God made us. That's really the key. He put it in our DNA and we can't change that. But what if we could? It wouldn't matter to them because it all boils down to religion. What is super cool about being a girl? What is super cool about being a boy? What are some super cool elements boys and girls share? What are some things boys and girls don't share? Why is this good? Why are you happy to be the gender that you are? I find it interesting that they say that. Why are you happy to be the gender that you are? If it's possible to be happy to be that gender, it seems to me that it, by you know logical extension, it's possible to be unhappy with it, right? They want to suppress the idea that people could be unhappy with it, but boost the idea that they're happy with it. That's really interesting. Be sure that you answer this question too. Tell your kids why you like being the gender that you are, and especially why you liked it at their age. You are a significant gender model for your children. Here's game number three. Here's the lesson. All things have a purpose. Oh, this is going to be a religious lesson, isn't it? I haven't seen any Bible verses in this one yet, I don't think. Usually they have at least one Bible verse in these books. Materials needed, a six-sided die, paper and crayons, a blindfold, a plush ball, and a timer or stopwatch. Here's the objective. 
Tokatok, which is the town, has nearly been saved from culture. We just need you to help with a few small tasks before we can have victory over this mean vulture. Complete the six mini games worth one point each. Honestly, I can't even believe they named him Culture. That is so on the nose, right? Instructions? Roll the die and record Culture's score on the scoreboard. Pick one player from Team Brave. A parent will whisper a secret word to the player who will hold his or her tongue with his fingers and repeat the word to the rest of the Team Brave. To the rest of Team Brave. If Team Brave can guess the word in 30 seconds or less, they win a point. The word is squirrel. 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 Okay, I can do it. That's not too bad. One child modification. A parent holds his own tongue and says squirrel for the child to guess. Why do you think God gave you a tongue? feet, or hands. What are at least two purposes for each? Okay, no one's cutting their tongue or feet or hands off. What are they talking about here? How can you use each of those body parts for good? What about for bad? Okay, <laughs> this is getting weird, dude. What was Kevin the Elephant's purpose at the end of the book? How did he discover that purpose? How did Kevin help others by living according to his purpose? What are some things you're good at? How can you use those to help your family and others? Wow, that's weird. Ashley suggests, encourage the children to bring up qualities or skills that their siblings have. Brave summary, though Kevin the elephant loved to sing, he quickly realized that he was not a bird, no matter what culture the vulture said. Your gender is a part of who you are, and you were made this way for a specific purpose. No, your sex is a part of who you are. Well, it's all a part of who you are, but your sex is something that you're born with. It's a physiological aspect. It's physiological traits, and it's a lot harder to change. Your gender is a is self-ascribed. It's a self-ascribed aspect of your identity. Your purpose does not change just because other people say so. Boys are boys. Girls are girls. Who you are is wonderful and special. It's worth celebrating. You know the sad thing about this? This book is going to be read to kids who are genuinely having gender crises, who genuinely feel like they're in the wrong body and don't know what to do with that. And grandparents are going to get this book for their trans grand uh, grandchildren. It's just sad, dude. It's just straight up fucking sad. What a destructive fucking book. It's not just book, destructive book series, book publisher insane let me know what you think about it in the comments i think this is just nuts